All right. So nothing teased a new major update for the phone one in the form of this Nothing OS 1.5, which is based on Android 13, and it is actually an open beta. But they selected some users out of all those who applied, and even I was not selected. But no one can stop us from side loading the update, and that's why I did update my unit to let you guys know if you should try out this version or not, the pros and cons it has, and how you can update your device manually to this version. So you should watch this video till the end to know each and every detail about it. And on that note, we finally have the new update with us, and it is now rolling out to the selected users. So before we get into all the tiny details, make sure to tap on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And in case you wish to watch this video in Hindi language, here is a card to the bit tech Hindi channel. This update has the version number 1.5 and weighs almost 1 GB in size and has a bunch of changes as per the changelog. And there are some new features too. So I'll share the process on how to install it manually in the second half of this video. But let's start off with the benchmark scores. So on under 12 on the Geekbench, the device chooses to score around 807 in single core and 2622 in the multi core score. And now it scores around 818 in single core and 2994 in the multi core score, which is actually a bit better than the last version. And on the Android, the device chooses to score around 5,8000 points and now it scores around 4,74000 points. Though these scores are only for your reference and don't mean that much in the real world usage. Coming back to the features now. And first of all, we have this new weather application, which is designed by nothing to look similar to the system UI that we have here. It looks quite clean and minimal as you would expect from them. Overall, the system UI and launcher is just the same as before, but we do have some small changes in this version, like with this new volume panel, which now looks something like this. So it is more accessible than the previous version and just looks more in line with the system theme now. Also for what it's worth, the system animations feel a lot smoother now and the app opening animations are also very fluid as you can see right here. Nothing also said about better app opening times and yes, it is better than before, which is something you will definitely notice in day to day usage. Apart from this, they have also added pop up windows for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi tile. So when you tap on the icon, it will turn them on or off. But when you tap on the names, you will get this new pop up window which I think feels a bit more refined and better while switching between devices and networks. In the Material U theming, there are a bit more colors to choose for the overall system theme, but sadly there are no themed icons as of now, which I would have loved to see. There is also a new screenshot button in the task manager, but the pop-up window is not there in this build. Apart from this, we have the new Android 13 features like the clipboard, which will keep your data for a couple of hours. Other than this, we have this new QR code scanner in the notification shape and also that system monitor toggle is there too. There is also a new media player tile as well, but that sperm animation is missing here for now and I would have loved to see that. Now if I talk about the battery life in the initial few hours, it seems fine, but I will have to test it out even more to claim anything about it. Coming to the camera part now and here, nothing has changed. The UI, camera modes and everything is as is. So here are some quick samples from the main camera. Overall, I would love to see some more controls and features here. There is also the live caption toggle, which will add subtitles to anything that is playing on your device. Something you would love is the new notification permission that every app has to ask before it can bother you. So now you can just deny or accept the notification, which is something that I love. I also saw the new photo picker, though that is not specific to Android 13 and will come to most older versions of Android. Also, the device is now on December 22 security patch, which is the latest one till now. Plus, the apps like Netflix and Google Pay are working fine, which in this update is mentioned that they won't work. So something you should know. Talking about the issues, well, I did not find any major issue thankfully with this version, but I did face this blank lock screen issue and the gestures froze a couple of times in this short time, all of which is expected from a beta version. And hence for the maximum stability, you should not install this until it is even more stable as battery life and performance might not be up to the mark for you and I hope they will improve it. Though honestly, I would like to see more features here like an app lock, three finger screenshots and some more features that used to exist in the OG Oxygen OS. What do you feel about this version? Do let me know in the comment section down below. And now for those who want to install it right away and cannot wait to try it out. 
well for safety purposes do keep a backup of your data even though no data will be lost in this process anyway so download the relevant zip file links to which are in the description area just below the like button so it is around 1 gb in size and now open any file manager that you have now here create a new folder and name it ota and move the update file into this folder as simple as that now open the google dialer on your phone and type star hash star hash 682 hash star hash star and now it will open an update menu for you so it will show you the update zip file is there that you downloaded and if not you can just choose it from the browse option and now it will ask you if you wish to install it so tap on the ok button and you are all set so this will start installing this update on your phone one and it will take around 10 to 20 minutes at max after which it will restart automatically and you are all set you are now on the nothing OS 1.5 and by the way, the Nothing Phone 1 now also supports the game dashboard that was exclusive to Pixel devices till now. Which means you get the FPS counter and other toggles like the screen recording and much more which is indeed very helpful. The battery life on day 1 of installation was around 5 hours with 5G on all the time which I think is quite solid. And on 4G, I think it should last more than 6 hours easily with my kind of usage. And that's fine too. So these are all the changes that you get with the Nothing OS 1.5 update on the phone one. And if you do end up liking this video, make sure to press that like button and that bell icon if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.